Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I'm here because I want to improve my English. I hope that is the same situation with you. The idea is to learn few words every day and in the process expand our vocabulary. The very first day, the very first word that I want to cover today is contrive. Contrive. It's a word. And again, notice this I with a with a line on top of it. You will find it. Way down here, under pi, is the example, right where, where I'm pointing here. You can enlarge this thing, I know it's very tiny probably, but you can somehow, if you can zoom on it or somehow, that's the sound here. The I with a line on it is the same sound as in pi, contrive. What does it mean to contrive? To contrive means to make make something up, to make something up. Artificially that is. In other words to to fabricate, for example, a story. If you fabricate a story, you're contriving it. Something that is contrived, something contrived is usually is forced, is artificial, and therefore. Unnatural. So if someone says your if someone if it says that your story sounds contrived, what they're trying to tell you is that it doesn't sound real. It sounds uh, made up. It sounds uh, forced. It's not natural. For those of you who do not know this symbol, this means therefore. Same symbol with the third dot at the bottom means since. Since. Since not as in logic, or oh sorry, not since not as in time, not as in since four o'clock, but since as in logic. Since A is bigger than B, therefore, and B is bigger than C, therefore A should be bigger than C. In that sense, that is contrived. To make up a story. To make up a story with uh, highly unlikely events, that story could said to be contrived. I have something written here, if I don't know if I want to go through all this or not. Uh, but let's put it here. For example, no, let's not go into it right now. Something that is contrived, anything that is contrived, anything that is contrived, requires ingenuity. And what ingenuity comes from the word ingenious. And of course, ingenious means to be clever. Ingenuity is the noun. Uh, it requires ingenuity because uh, one has to be clever. Uh, it requires some thinking. It requires uh, some uh, planning and so forth to, to come up with something contrived. Let's talk about this word next, ingenuity. How I want to cover it next. So I need to raise this thing so that we have room to cover, talk about that now.
in the new e t. It's a noun. It's a noun of ingenious or clever. Just like just like the noun of clever. Clever is your adjective, adjective. Just like the noun of clever is cleverness. Honest is an adjective. The noun would be honesty. Is a noun. Uh, st stupid would be stupidity. Similarly, the noun of ingenious is ingenuity. That's all. Don't confuse. Don't confuse this word, ingenuity, with in, inge, ingenuity, with ingenuous, which is a different word altogether. Don't confuse the two words. That's why I put them next to each other, so that you are aware of it. Do not confuse this word with that word. Those are two separate words with entirely two different meanings. This is pronounced in Jan U us. And this was a noun, but this is an adjective. Ingenuous, ingenuous person uh, is someone who is Ingenuous person is someone who is not very sophisticated, not very worldly, not very refined. person who is not very sophisticated, not very worldly, not very refined is said to be ingenuous. It also means it also means someone who is straightforward frank Honest, and candid. But in the sense, it has a nuance, and if you do not know the word nuance, well, today is uh, day number 10. If you want to learn the word, meaning of the word nuance proper, properly, I'll go to the day one video, okay, just type in Kashmani prep dash vocab dash day one. The very first word that I covered was nuance, which means the six shades of meanings, uh, minute uh, subtle differences in the meanings of the word. Ingenuous person is somebody who is straightforward and who is frank and honest and candid, but it has a nuance of being so because you're behaving almost like a child. Uh, it's almost like a child like a person ingenuous person, is somebody who is not very sophisticated, not very, I wouldn't say not very clever, just not very sophisticated, not very worldly. They are straightforward people, they are frank people, they are honest people. They, they, are, they, are, they are not somebody uh, uh, conniving and so forth. They are, they are very straightforward people, almost childlike. Let's learn the word candid. I want to talk about the word candid. I want to talk about the word candid because a lot of the times uh, when I'm dealing with the students, 
uh, they think that the word candid means hidden, and I'll tell you in a second why they, why they think. And of course, candid does not mean hidden because it's been used here as a synonym of this thing. Candid means straightforward, frank, and honest. That's what candid means. Why do some people think candid means uh, hidden? Well, again, adjective. And it means exactly what I just told you. It means to be straightforward. Honest. Open, frank, that's what candid means. Why do some people have a tendency to think that candid means hidden? Because back in the old days, many years ago, if you're too young you probably don't know it, but uh, years ago there used to be a TV program called Candid Cameras. And where they would have these hidden cameras, then the cameras would catch people in certain act or doing certain things, and, those, and that program was called Candid Camera. And because of the fact that cameras were hidden, some people tend to think that candid, that's what candid means. Candid does not mean that. Candid does not mean hidden. Candid means open and honest and straightforward. The reason why that program was called Candid Camera is because whatever the camera was capturing was straightforward, was honest, was open, was not rehearsed. Uh, because they were catching the people in their natural act. It was not rehearsed, which is why whatever they were showing you was the honest thing. And hence, candid camera, honest camera, not something rehearsed, not something premeditated. Do you understand? That's it. That's what candid means. That's what that was it for today. There is one last one that I want to cover. Let's let's cover it. I've been putting it off. Let's cover it. I was being lazy, but why? I sort of edited my lecture here when I was talking about contrive. So. I'm not going to do it, I'm going to cover this thing so it's out of my system. Con, cat, donate. That's the verb. The noun would be it means simply, I'll tell you exactly what it means and then I'll tell you how it came up, uh, how it came to my mind as I was talking about the word contrive, uh, which is why I have it here. To concord something simply means to link, not concord rather, to con concatenate something. Uh, that's a different word. Don't 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 write down the. I'm not sure about the meaning. Uh, I'm not sure about the spelling of the word. We'll learn this word later. To concat means to, to make something up, to fabricate something. That's not what I meant to say. To concatenate means to link or connect or connect in a chain or series and the way I was going to use that word in a sentence is that if something is contrived contrived story usually uh, to make up a story with a, with a concatenation with a, with a concatenation of highly highly in, improbable events that story could be said to be contrived or forced one more time if you make up a story uh, a story that is made up with a concatenation of highly improbable events uh, where you're connecting these highly improbable events one after the other the story sounds contrived, it sounds forced, it sounds fabricated it's not here no longer, it's not here any, any, any longer uh, the word was contrived and that's, that's, that's a contrived story because the concatenation of events uh, is just too suspicious the, the chain of events that you're describing it's just highly improbable, and therefore it's contrived, it's forced, it's artificial. 
that's it. And of course, if something is forced and something is artificial and, 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 and uh, highly improbable, in, in order for some person to come up with that, uh, such a thing, it requires certain cleverness, it requires certain ingenuity, which is why we did the word ingenuity. And after that, we had to cover the word ingenuous, uh, because those are two, two separate words, and I want to make sure that you do not confuse the two words. That's it for today. I will see you tomorrow on day 11. I hope you found these uh, uh, these words. I hope you find these words helpful in your reading, in your writing, and the exams that you might take, the GRE or GMAT, SAT, TOEFL. Uh, these words show up everywhere. Not everywhere in the day-to-day -day speaking and, and dealing, so obviously, but in your in your college reading and so forth, you will find these words in the textbook. You might hear these words in the lectures being uh, the words being used by the professor and so forth. But of course, you're not going to find. Uh, concatenation of events uh, from uh, the guy at the checkout counter in McDonald, obviously. But uh, you do come across in the other settings. Do you understand? I hope you find this helpful. I, I hope you found this helpful. I will see you again, as I said, on, on day 11. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor for uh, over the internet via Skype. I also do tutoring face to face, obviously, and over the telephone. For the GRE, prepforgre.com, prepforgmed.com, prepforsat.com, or prepfortofl.com, go to any of these websites, send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help you out with whatever it is that you need. Okay? Or you can simply go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email. Alright? Thank you.